Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for the honour of asking me to be the patron of the Bunwell so Australia Association and for joining with us all here today and I particularly acknowledge our veterans who are amongst us today and we're delighted to have you with us. I've been honoured, as I say, to be invited to address this National Day of Remembrance. In doing so, I pay my respects to the traditional owners of the land in which we gather, the Gadigal, and all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who serve this nation in every conflict and peacekeeping mission in which we have participated. And today I especially honour our Torres Strait Light Infantry Battalion, which consisted of almost the entire male population of the Torres Strait, who defended Australia from those islands and who the Prime Minister presented with uh, medals this Past week. On this day, we honour our servicemen and women on land, on sea, and in the air who fought valiant, valiantly alongside our allies from the Battle of the Coral Sea and on the Dakota Track until the end of the war was declared. And just two weeks ago, in this very place, we commemorated the 70th anniversary of victory in the Pacific. There would have been no victory, however, without the tremendous efforts of our servicemen and women to protect our island nation and the lands of our neighbours to our north. By March 1942, the Japanese held a line from the Bowl to Singapore, just a few hundred kilometres from the tip of Australia. Prime Minister John Kirk declared, and I quote, the fall of Singapore opens the battle for Australia. Today we remember and honour those who directly carried the burden of defence of Australia through this war, and the many thousands killed in action, wounded or taken prisoner of war. Almost 17,000 have died in the war against Japan, serving in Malaya, Singapore, Timor, Papua New Guinea, Borneo, Solomon Islands, the Philippines, often in the most appalling conditions. 8,000 died in captivity as prisoners of war from brutality, starvation and disease. And at home in 1942-43, Australia also faced loss of life and the threat of invasion. Darwin, Port Island in the Torres Strait, the Broome were bombed, Newcastle was shelled, here in Sydney, midget submarines entered the harbour, and of course, a number of our ships were torpedoed off our eastern coast. The epic battle of Dakota was a critical turning point in the Pacific War when Australians fought a monumental rearguard action against the Japanese across a tortuous jungle terrain. Their extreme courage prevented the enemy's access to Port Moresby from there within easy striking distance of our country. We remember also with eternal gratitude the loyalty and skill of those Papuan men who played a vital role in the battle. They carried supplies forth for the troops, and then as the number of troops who were wounded or fell sick increased, carried back to safety those who were unable to walk. We remember the villages, dug by our Australian men as the fuzzy ones and angels, represented here today, who carried and treated the sick and wounded along the track. This year and each year, we welcome their representative to this commemoration with gratitude and affection. Our nation will never forget their service. It's also equally important that we reflect on and honour all our women and men who made their contribution on the home front. Women, our people in science and industry, those working in factories and farms. It was a time when everyone looked after their mates and their neighbours and did their bit to ensure victory. By June 1943, the strength of women in service had grown to approximately 18,000 in the Australian Women's Army Service, 16,000 in the Women's Australian Artillery Air Force, 
1,400 in the Women's Royal Australian Navy, Naval Service and almost 9,000 in the Nursing Service. In addition, many thousands of women on the home front work in government munitions, factories, shipbuilding and aircraft work, transport and communications, commerce and industry in the rural sector, with the Women's Land Army to meet critical labour shortages in our farms, ensuring supplies of meat, vegetables and fruit. Here in our harbour, Papadou Island Dockyard became a hive of activity with the conversion of passenger liners to troop transports and hospital ships and major repairs to our warships. The number of munitions factories increased from four in 1940 to 39 by June 1943. Austerity calls were pledged by the Australian people to strip every selfish, comfortable habit, every luxurious impulse, every act, word or deed, that retards the victory march. Unquote. As the world covered its prayer and families suffered hardships, dislocation and loss of loved ones, others stepped to the fore. Legacy, looking after our war widows and families returned and service fleet, looking after repatriated and returning service and women. The Australian Army Medical Women's Services, the Red Cross and the Voluntary Aid Detachment who all provided medical care and respite services. School children too did their bit, collecting paper, rubber and other recyclables, knitting socks and collecting items for care packages. Despite the difficulties and hardships experienced on the home front, the Australians of that generation remember this time for a sense of unity, a time when people put their hand up, worked hard and pulled together. It was a case of all in. It was a whole nation effort, Australians at their best, volunteering and working together, putting aside differences to look after each other and neighbours on the home front and to our nation's north. And that's what we should pass on to our children. It provided the basis for what we are today, a united and resilient country. It is no accident that since this war, our nation has demonstrated an increasing commitment to the Pacific region, which we fought to protect from 1942-45. One of the objectives of the Battle of Australia Association is to educate the children of Australia about the momentous events of our national history between 1942 and 45. And we thank the many school children here today for their involvement in this service. I congratulate the Battle for Australia Association for its commitment to honour the memory of our servicemen and women, the people of Australia, our allies and our neighbouring nations. Let's do it again. Thank you very much, Your Excellency.